Welcome to Adastra. The next day, Amicus wakes me up by gently shaking my shoulder. Hey, hey, Tivo, wake up. I roll over on my sofa, groggily pulling the blanket up around me as I shiver. Uh, it's so cold in here. Oh, I can turn up the heat if you'd like. It's just that I tend to uh, sweat a little when it's too warm. Could just give me a better blanket. Oh, of course. I'm in just my underwear, my Romanesque underwear. Last night Amicus had shown me, a bit awkwardly, how to tie it on. While it's comfortable, it always feels a little loose. There's a constant worry that it's just going to drop off at some point. Anyway, we should get going soon. Alex is probably already waiting for us. I rub the sleep from my eyes, drawing the blanket around myself a bit more tightly. For what? We're going to the island for a picnic. You wanted something to do, didn't you? Oh, yeah, right. I get up and grab my new robe off the back of the sofa. Oh, don't bother with a shower today since we'll be swimming. Well, I will anyway. Amicus moves to the bathroom and pulls out a large glass bottle filled with a clear liquid. He pours into the glass cap and notices me watching. Oh, uh, would you like to try some? I suppose your species cares about dental hygiene considering your teeth look all right. What is it? Or a wash that simply cleans the teeth, keeps the breath from becoming offensively odorous. He holds out the cap and I take it from him, as he just pours the liquid straight into his mouth. I sniff it and though I expected a minty smell, it's floral instead. Was this all you used to clean your teeth? Amicus swishes the liquid around in his mouth for a while, then spits it into the sink. Well, it removes any surface level debris, but you should get a deeper cleaning from a drone at least once a week. I can choose that later too, if you'd like. That kind of sounds terrifying. Maybe. Honestly, you're supposed to use this every morning, but I forgot yesterday and all the excitement that we had. I lift the liquid-filled cap to my mouth, and with just a little hesitation, I pour it in. The taste reminds me of walking into a room that's just been sprayed with air freshener. Not exactly pleasant, but when I spit it into the sink I notice bits of what I assume to be plaque floating down the drain. My mouth does feel a lot more fresh. I guess it works. Amicus seems impatient though, shifting his weight from one foot to the other. Ready, Tibor? Uh, yeah, sure. Would you have bathing suits or something? Uh, like clothes for swimming? Amicus steps out of the room and into the main hallway as I follow him. At the same time, I finish tying on my robe, trying to make sure everything is correctly in place. Oh, no, we swim nude, but if you prefer to have something on, you could use your undergarments. I can't imagine that would be comfortable, but Alex does it. Just as he says the cat's name, I see him standing in the hall, carrying a heavy-looking basket in both arms. Once he sees us, he smiles. Hello, Amicus. Hello, Tibor. Well, it's good to see you again. How are you this morning? I'm about to respond, but Amicus is already speaking. Oh, good, good. Uh, you got all the food, Alex. Ah, uh, yeah, though are you sure it's not against protocol that I took all of this? Well, it would be if I didn't approve it. Now let's go. Alex and I follow the excited wolf's swishing tail as we head toward the front archways, an area that I haven't been to before. <clears throat> I hear a familiar grunt and we all stop and turn around. Cato stands there watching us, stoic as always. Where might you three be off to? Uh, hello, Cato. Uh, we're going for a swim. A swim? I can't exactly tell what's going on behind that visor. The tone in its voice doesn't seem all that enthusiastic. Yamika seems to sense it too. Oh, yes. A moment of silence goes by. You know you have combat training to get to, Amicus. Well, yes, but only for part of the day. We'll be back shortly after noon. Cato's face twitches and I can sense his disapproval coming off of him in waves. Then he turns his head slightly in my direction. Are you taking the pets? I quickly fix my face into a middle distance stare. Oh yes, I thought we could all use a little fresh air. Cato goes on staring for a moment and I start to believe what Amicus said about Cato not having a good mood. Finally, the old wolf turns his attention back to Amicus. Well, I have some of my own duties to take care of this morning, but I expect you'll be in the amphitheatre by the eleventh hour. Uh, do not be late. 
With that, he turns and stalks off down the hall before disappearing around a marble corner. Amicus lets out a breath. Ugh, I thought he was going to cancel our outing altogether. All right, let's go before anyone else tries to stop us. Amicus quickly turns towards the archways again and leads us out into the warm morning air. You seem very eager, Amicus. Well, I haven't been swimming for weeks now. I need a good exercise. As we walk, I notice Alex huffing and puffing, struggling with the basket, so I hold up my hand. Here, do you need help? Oh, I don't want to inconvenience you. I reach out and take the handle of the basket, and Alex doesn't resist, and I pull it out of his paws. It's heavy, but not impossible to carry. I heft it in both my hands as we walk down the path toward the lake. Are you sure it's not too heavy? I'm fine, though I think someone else might be able to handle it a bit better than us, especially since I imagine it's mostly his food. And because his ears perk at my pointed statement. Oh, is it heavy? Amicus turns and yanks the basket from me, easily swinging it in one paw. I should have said something, though I'll have to give it back once we get to the shore. I'll be swimming to the island. I frown. Is it far? Well, of course, you'll be taking the sights here. What's that? Alex moves up to walk alongside me. You'll see, it's sort of a hovercraft for sightseeing, as the name implies. After a few minutes, we reach the shore where there's a small gazebo with various boats underneath it. There's also what looks like a jet ski, and next to that is just a glass box with an open top. This is what Alex and Amicus woke up to, the wolf leaning over to drop the picnic basket inside. Once he does that, he strips off his underwear and tosses it into the glass craft as well. I look away and notice Alex do the same, his ears down as he blushes furiously. Trying to ignore the wolf, I walk up to the strange little craft, noticing there's an open space on the side of the box that allows us to get in. The floor is glass as well and I can see the dirt and vegetation underneath us. Race you to the island. Amicus cheerfully waves at us before running into the lake, the wolf's bushy tail swooshing around over his naked butt. Oh, so inappropriate. Alex shakes his head and turns to a slanted glass panel attached to the side of the craft. He touches it and several bright characters come to life on the screen. A few seconds later, our little glass craft levitates off the ground and starts to move over the water, albeit at a very slow pace. Well, what is this thing? A sightseeing craft. Parental tech, so it's very safe and easy to navigate. I watch as we start to float over the slightly choppy water. Amicus already about 10 metres out in front of us. He's a pretty good swimmer. We're just slow. That's why he turned into a race, because he knows we won't beat him, even if we go in at full speed. Sure enough, Amicus starts to widen the gap. I notice Alex's ears twitching about as he navigates our craft, looking left and right while avoiding looking at the water together. Do you not like swimming? Oh, I hate large bodies of water. Well, it's a bit stressful coming out here, honestly. The island is serene, and for the most part it makes the trip worth it. Ah. Feelines lines are kind of like that on uh, 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 my planet too. I cringe inwardly as I almost reveal the name of my planet. It was pretty blatant, but Alex goes on like he didn't even notice. Well, yeah, similar oranges and all. But honestly, I'm a bit surprised you're doing so well yourself, or you even decided to come out here. Well, that comes off as a little strange to me, but I'm distracted watching Amicus get closer to the island. Maybe only about 50 metres now. I start to get an idea though. Judging by the distance between us, Amicus and the island, I feel like I might be able to beat him. I grin then start stripping off my robe. What What are you doing? We're not on the island yet. Alex brush, blushes furiously again looking away. I'm going to beat him. What? I grab onto the edge of the glass barrier and swing my legs over it. No! Alex actually tries to lunge for me, his paws just barely missing as I plunge into the lake. I don't have much time to think about why, because I'm instantly surrounded by freezing cold water. I come up gasping from the shock of it before I spot the direction of the island and start swimming toward it. It's been a while since I've really had a chance to swim. I'd always been pretty good at it though, and soon enough I get into the familiar motions of putting one arm ahead of the other while turning my head to take breaths. While this is going on, I can still hear Alex shouting behind me. 
But then, just as I'm feeling I'm about to gain on Lamicus, I get rammed by something heavy and furry that suddenly starts to pull me into its grasp. At first, I wonder if being captured by some kind of a dastron sea monster. Maybe that's why Alex is freaking out. But just as I'm about to resign myself to that fate, T War, don't worry, I've got you. I stop fighting against the big furry arms wrapping around me as I feel Amicus kicking his legs under mine, sort of pulling me toward the island that's just a few dozen metres away now. What, what are you doing? I try to pull away, but Amicus keeps me in a fierce death grip, refusing to loosen up at all. My Galen! I look up and see Alexios dumping out the basket full of food into the sightseer before throwing the basket at me. Yo's this, it'll keep you above water! It hits me in the face for gently bobbing away in the waves. What the hell is going on? I try to pull away from Amicus one last time, but give up, leaning into his chest with a bewildered expression on my face. He kicks his feet awkwardly into mine for I finally feel our feet drag into the shifting sand under the water. Even then Amicus doesn't let me go. He keeps his firm grip around my wrist as he pulls me to shore, bringing us onto the little island. Are you alright? Amicus puts his paws on my shoulders, his wide eyes looking into mine, breathing heavily. Yes, what the hell just happened? I rub my nose where the basket hit me in the face. That's when Alex's little craft pushes gently onto the sand. He hops out, running up to us. I don't know what happened, Amicus. He just jumped out. I'm sorry I couldn't stop him. Alex bows deeply, ears flat and trembling. I start to wonder if maybe there's something in the water that I wasn't supposed to come into contact with. I look at my skin, but everything seems fine. I finally look up at Amicus, trying to ignore his dick as it swings around between his legs. Amicus seems to notice at the same time and covers up his crotch with his paw, keeping the other one on my shoulder. Can you just explain to me what happened? Amicus frowns at me. Well, you can't swim, you're hopeless in water. That's why I wanted you in the craft. Alex's lips tremble a bit as if about to cry. You're not born with natural swimming abilities. Whenever a primate falls into water, they're almost sure to drown. Are you sure you're okay? I'm so, so sorry. The way they explain to me how primates work reminds me that they might still not might consider me to be on the same intelligence level as them. It's like I don't know my own species' capabilities. I just jumped in because I'm a stupid barbarian. It irritates me, but both of them look almost traumatised. Especially Amicus. The poor not conceding his crotch is still firmly locked on my shoulder, if worried I'm going to go running off into the water again. Guys, I can swim. I mean, yeah, it's not natural for us, but we can learn. I've known how to swim since I was a kid. They still stare back at me as if not understanding. Really? Well, yeah, do you think I just jumped out of the, the thing just to drown myself? Amicus lets go of my shoulder to cover his dick with both paws now. Well, I don't know. I know you're unhappy here, so I wasn't sure. I laugh. I'm not that unhappy. I'm fine. And you know I'm not an idiot. I thought you know this by now, Amicus. Things go quiet then. Alex looking off to the side with his ears down, standing awkwardly covering his crotch with both paws. So did I ruin our outing? Oh no, no, I just need to remember that you're not a typical child. Now uh, let's try to relax and have some fun. That's the whole reason we came out here after all. Alex still looks a bit dejected, looking off toward the sightseer. I ruined our food, I'm sorry. Alex bows again. I remember how Alex isn't really supposed to know about my intelligence or anything about me, really. But if he's bothered by the conversation that just took place, he's not showing it. Amica shrugs. Oh, stop bowing, it makes me feel strange. The naked wolf ambles over the craft, and as he leans over to look at the cluttered mess inside, his tail lifts and we get a view of his butt again. Alex looks away, blushing, but at this point I think I've given up trying to not see the various naked parts of this wolf. Being in the nude seems pretty natural for him, even if he tries to hide it from us. Well, I think we can salvage a decent meal after this. The wine's good. Amicus lifts a large bottle of wine into the air, still not turning around. I, I'll sort through it, Amicus. Please, enjoy your swim and exercises in the meantime. Alex quickly moves to start gathering up the food, head down. Well, all right. And ears up, Alex. We're here to have fun. Alex puts his ears up, but doesn't lift his head to look at us. Oh, right. The wolf grins at me, dipping his muzzle down into his crotch. The cats are just like you when it comes to this sort of thing. Anyway, I'll get in the water. You won't have to keep averting your eyes. You should join me now that we know you can swim, Tebow. 
I start to follow, then look back at the cat. Uh, do you need help, Alex? Alex shakes his head quickly, and I can see that he's still blushing. Go on and swim, Tibor. I'll just be sunbathing anyway. There isn't much room in the sightseer for two people. Namika seems to be waiting for me, so I follow the wolf out toward the water. More intelli intelligent conversation and the swim partner? Well, I have a pet that can do it all. Amica shoulders me as we walk along the beach, making me stumble. Hey! I say it warningly, even though I know he's joking. You know, I have to wonder why he'd take me out here if he didn't think I could swim. Well, everyone enjoys the beach, whether they can swim or not. The sand becomes too hot as I walk along the beach, so I have to jog the last ten metres or so to the wet sand, sighing as the wave cools my burning feet. Amicus catches up. Do what? Well, I suppose I should remember that you are a bit more fragile than the other species. Fragile? Well, a bit. I mean, when we fought on the ship, I had to hold back a lot. I give Amicus a shove, the wolf stumbling more than he probably would have if he wasn't covering up his junk. Whoa, hey! With that, I wade out into the shallows, the water quickly coming up to my shoulders. I stick to the shore, treading water as I watch Amicus splash around, doing a sort of lunging swim that reminds me of the butterfly stroke, just a lot more clumsy. After a few minutes, he swims up next to me. You doing all right? Well, I'm still unsure of you being out in the water. Hey, don't start. I know what I'm doing. All right, all right. But even experienced swimmers can have accidents, so let me know if you need help or anything. Amicus stands right in front of me, its fur plastered tightly against his chest. I will. The wolf shields his eyes from the sun with a paw as he looks around. Well, anyway, do you want to have a race around the island? We can stay in the shallows. I actually used to do it with Cass all the time as a pup. I look around the small island, deciding the distance is short enough that I can manage it. All right, sure. All right, Tibor, but be warned. I won't go easy on you just because you're a primate. I swim past Amicus. Go. Well, hey! I hear the wolf splash noisily behind me as he tries to catch up. I do fairly well for the first half of our little race, managing to get around the back side of the island without the wolf catching up to me. I notice this part of the island is covered in dense trees and vegetation with no beach to speak of. It's at this point that Amicus overtakes me with his big lunging strokes, breathing hard each time he comes up. I realise how hard he's trying, I wonder if he's actually afraid of losing. It's clear there's a competitive edge to him, I guess that makes sense if he's so determined to beat Cassius to the throne. As we come around the final bend I fall further behind, quickly losing stamina as the muscles burn in my arms and legs. Amicus seems to notice and slows down a bit toward the end, allowing me to catch up some before he reaches the same spot we'd started at. For a moment we just both gasp for breath in the shallows, though Amicus grins. <laughs> I win! <laughs> I roll my eyes and wait until I can breathe evenly again. Whatever, you've got way more muscle than I do. But, there isn't really an advantage. Amicus still breathes heavily. I wonder how much effort he actually put into beating me. Be Besides, I've got all this fur weighing me down. You don't. You know, competitive swimmers actually shave their fur down near the skin. That makes me wonder what a shaved wolf would look like. I guess I just have bad stamina. I actually did a lot better than I thought you would. Had me worried the first few minutes. What do you call that swimming style? Uh, I don't know. I think it's just called freestyle. Amicus moves closely, his breathing finally under control. Could you teach me? To swim? Well, it looks like you've already got that down. I mean, your style of swimming. You beat me, didn't you? Why would you want to learn my style? I say that, but I think I know what Amicus is getting at. He has a very clumsy way of swimming, sort of like he's fighting the water itself. Amicus harums, blowing some droplets of water from his nose. Well, it looked effective. I'd just like to try if you're willing to show me. I smile. All right. For the next hour, I show the wolf how to swim freestyle. At the beginning, it kind of feels like I'm teaching a toddler how to swim. The first few tries end up with him thrashing about around in the water like he's about to drown, showering me with lake water until I have to reach out and grab him to make him stop. I decide to start with the arms first, standing in the shallows and showing him how I put one arm ahead of the other in a sort of rhythm. Again, I have to stand close to the naked wolf, grabbing his big furry arms and showing him how to move them. Once he has that down, he quickly learns how to add his feet into the mix, and very soon he's swimming back and forth, picking up speed to the point that I have no hope of keeping up with him. 
I realised then that Amicus is a very fast learner. <laughs> oh, this is so much better. Do you know any other styles? Amicus paddles happily around me. Well, I guess back floating, but no, not really. I'm not a professional swimmer. Amicus stands, water running down his furry body. Want to race again? He grins at me. I laugh. Oh no, I'm exhausted after teaching you all of that. Oh, don't be such a pup. Or are you afraid of losing again? Amicus winks to lighten his words. I think about flicking him on the nose like he's a misbehaving dog. I resist the urge. No, I'm tired and I'm hungry, and if I stay out any longer, I'm probably going to get a sunburn. Reminding Amicus that there's food on the beach seems to change his mind. He follows me into the shallows. Oh, that's right. You have no fur. Oh, sometimes I get burned around my nose if I stay out too long. Are you all right? I feel Amicus rub a paw over my shoulders and I shiver. Well, we'll know by tonight. I feel all right. So we trudge onto the beach. I see Alex curled up on a blanket, his fur bright and shiny under the sun. Judging by the plates around him, he's already eaten. Amicus chuckles. <laughs> oh, such a feline. Anyway, you better keep your eyes off me. I want the fur to dry before I put my undergarments back on, so I'm going to stop covering up for you. Automatically, my eyes start wandering toward the wolf before snapping back to look straight ahead. Then I start to think. Yeah, I'm going to be here for a while as far as I know. Maybe I should get used to the whole nudity thing now. When in Rome? I mean, it's not that big of a deal, and if it's a normal thing for the wolves, why not get used to it? So I look. Amicus grunts in surprise when he sees me not bothering to avoid looking his way. A well, human! Amicus' paws snap to cover in his crotch again. I smirk. What? I might as well get used to it if this is normal around you, right? Though I gotta say, you're acting like it isn't. Amicus pauses and pulls his paw away from his crotch, his face flushed. You just surprised me is all. Anyway. Amicus walks stiffly up the beach, past the sleeping Alex while I try to keep up. It's kind of satisfying to see how embarrassed he is considering how much he'd been teasing me about it. And honestly, now that I've seen it, it isn't really a big deal at all. The wolf's cock and balls are just like a human's. Sure, maybe a little more fur on the balls and a darker shade elsewhere, but still similar. We reach a sightseeing and I see that Alex has laid out the food in a little line of plates. Though some of the pastries look a bit squashed, everything seems to survive the emergency dumping that they suffered. Amicus grabs a few large plates of quiches and what look like fruit pastries. Meanwhile, I grab a folded blanket, the bottle of wine from Amicus, and a small bo smaller bottle of vegetable tasting juice I'd had yesterday for myself. We make our way over the shade of the trees for I roll out the blanket. Amicus starts to tie his underwear back on. Finally, he sits down with a huff before reaching out for the wine. You sure you don't want any? He asks before guzzling some of it down. Um, I mean, maybe at dinner or something, but I'd rather not get buzzed right now. Oh, really? I'd have to drink quite a bit more than this bottle to become inebriated. Guess that explains how he can drink so much of it for every meal. Well, you are a lot bigger. Anyway, this stuff is great. I easily pull out the cork on my own bottle before drinking down the ice-cold juice. Amicus pulls a face. Ugh, birdie? Oh, that stuff tastes awful. Wine is so much better. Amicus immediately goes to the fruit pastry, shoving two in his mouth at the same time. Maybe you just prefer sweet things? And slow down. Don't you take time to enjoy your food? Amicus frowns at me with his mouth full. Well, I do enjoy it. That's why I eat it first. I smile and go after one of the quiches instead. We eat in silence for a few minutes, then I remember what Cato had said earlier. When do you need to be at that thing Cato was talking about? Combat practice? Oh, we've got at least an hour yet. And what does that involve? Oh, just striking and grapples. Well, I'm just glad Cass isn't here to join us. Oh, I hate sparring with him. Really? He told me last night he can't even compete with you. Well, that's exactly why. He has a condition where his bones are less dense than what is normal. It makes them easy to break. Because of this, I'm more of a training dummy for him than anything. Basically, he just uses an excuse to punch me in the stomach. There isn't much I can do to retaliate that won't seriously injure him, so I prefer training with Cato. Didn't you tell Cassius you'd punch him yesterday? Amicus laughs. <laughs> I did, didn't I? Well, that's because he was so offended, but now he knows not to bother you. I've learned to be gentle with him since we we're pups, but my limits can only be pushed so far, especially now that I have you. You said you used to get along with him when you were pups. 
Yes, but I think that had more to do with him admiring me when we were younger. He used to look up to me, which was preferable to how he is now. What happened? Amica shrugs. Huh. We grew older, then mother died, and he was always very close to her. They shared a lot in common, including their disease. Amicus pokes around the pastries before picking one up that looks to be filled with the red fruit. And I suppose we've always been different philosophically, which would be fine if he weren't trying to take the throne from me. So if you're next in line for the throne, how could Cassius just challenge you for it? Is that how it's supposed to work? No, not really. Cato is the one who decided to do things this way, which he can because he's the acting emperor. Cassius has been building a following amongst the walls for the past several years. Amicus shakes his head. Well, I thought he was simply trying to solidify his chances of becoming my advisor, but his speeches and writings were so different from my father's. I did realise he was cultivating a certain persona for the emperorship eventually, but I never thought Cato would buy into it just because of Cassius's popularity. But he did, and here we are. Amicus shoes away a worryingly large fly that lands near the plate. I thought I'd have more time anyway. Well, a lot more time, but father's passing was sudden, so I'm left with what I have now. What happened to him, if you don't mind me asking? The father? A ship crashed while landing in the Dastra city about five months ago. It's a rare thing to happen, but it does happen. I'm sorry. Well, he's with the parents now, so I'll see him again. But he should have had so much more time left, just like mother. How old was he? 157. I blink. He was 157? Oh, yes. Years? Yes? Amicus looks at me confused. How long do you people live? Uh, it varies, obviously, but about 250 to 300 years. Wow. How long do your people live? Amicus looks slightly apprehensive. I don't know, 80? 100 if we're lucky. Oh. Amicus's ears fall. That's so short. Well, compared to you guys, yeah. Wait, how old are you? A 20, how old are you? Amicus is still frowning. Uh, 23. That gives me some pause trying to work out how much that would be in a human lifespan. Wait, so are you an adult or... Amicus seems to recover. Well, adulthood varies among species and cultures, obviously, but legal adulthood is 20, so yes, I'm considered an adult. Huh, that's about the same as humans. But the difference is that you die a lot sooner. That concerned look again. I shrug. Eh, I've grown up with the idea, so it's not all that shocking to me. Amica seems to be thinking. Well, maybe we can do something about it. I don't like the idea of you being through a fourth of your life when you've only just reached adulthood. I frown. Well, what are you going to do about it? Well, we aren't able to live so long naturally. We take supplements and medication that slows the aging process. Maybe we could consider some for you. It's an interesting thought, but I don't like the idea of being a guinea pig for wolvish medication. Uh, maybe, but let's figure out this whole emperor thing first. All right. Amicus picks at his claws for a while. Looks like he wants to say something, but he doesn't and just stays quiet. Finally, just as I'm about to ask him what's wrong, he looks over at the sleeping Alex. I'll be right back. And with that, the wolf suddenly gets up and jogs over to the cat. I can't help but feel the conversation was left unfinished. Then I see Amicus get down on his paws and knees as if sneaking up on Alex. I frown and watch as the wolf gets closer, his paw reaching out for Alex's earring. I guess the wolf wasn't being very quiet because Alex suddenly rolls over and squeals as the wolf leaps at him. Amicus, no, no, this is my best one, don't mess it up. I sigh and get up, a little reluctant to leave the shades and make my way over to the pair. Alex is rolled up into a little ball, clutching at his ears as he tries to hide the grapes. Don't you dare, do you want to tear my ear off? Well, I'm being gentle, if you stop trying to fight it, it would make this easier. No! Alexios tries to roll away and spots me. Tibor, help! I sigh and watch her a bit before deciding to save the poor cat. I look for an opening and pounce on Amicus's back, wrapping my arms around his neck and my legs around his waist, trying to throw him off balance. Oh, not so fragile now, are we? Amicus swings me back and forth as if trying to throw me off, but not really putting any effort into it. Meanwhile, Alex scrambles out from under the wolf before turning him, giving him a shove. 
Ah! Amicus starts to topple backwards, and for a moment I think I'm about to get crushed between this 300 pounds wolf and the sand. But Amicus turns as we fall, we end up laying sideways on the beach. Alex stands to the side, quickly dusting himself off before adjusting his earring, frowning. You know, I might as well stop wearing this thing. There's no point if half of it is plucked by the day's end. Amicus just lays there and laughs. This laugh is infectious, so I laugh too. <laughs> too good, Alex. Or maybe you should start wearing inedible berries instead. Alex huffs as he looks down his nose at us. It's a cultural staple of my people. And honestly, what you're doing is rather disrespectful, especially as a prospective emperor. Amicus waves his paw dismissively, laying flat on his back next to me, his arm flopping over my head. Oh, you're a friend. Obviously, I wouldn't do it to an actual ambassador. I am an actual ambassador, Amicus. Yes, but a friend ambassador. Alex sighs. Anyway, thank you, Tibor. You should obey your master, yes. But it's also important to keep your master in check when he oversteps his bounds. Hey, don't encourage insubordination, Alex. Amicus's big paw resting above my head comes down to ruffle my hair. I realise the first time since I was abducted that I'm at ease. Happy, even. Then Alex looks at the sky. Amicus, what time is it? Amicus suddenly sits over the grunt, also looking toward the sun. Oh, I don't know. Is it close to the eleventh hour? I was asleep, so I'm not sure. I last calm, but we're outside his boundaries. Amicus sits for a moment and sighs. Well, I suppose we should be off, just in case. We gather up the food and blankets. Don't you guys have portable clocks or something? Amica shrugs. Oh, we do, but you, Jack, can just ask Com. The wolf tapped his ear. But, like Alex said, his signal doesn't reach the island. Amicus is starting to look a little nervous, so we pick up the pace and pack ourselves into the sightseer. A bit more crowded now with Amicus inside. When we're halfway to the shore, Amicus asks the time and then groans. Damn it. Half past the eleventh hour. The amphitheatre is small compared to the massive one I'd seen in Rome. Might only be able to fit a hundred people at most. But Alex tells me that the really big one is in the city centre. He sits next to me on the bottom bench with the stairs between us. We watch Amicus stand alone in the centre of the pit. He has his paws on his hips, looking around, waiting. Well, I don't think he's here. Clearly. Well, do you want to be my sparring partner for the day, Alex? No! Alex scrunches up, one paw going to cover his ear as Amicus just laughs. I look around, not seeing the old wolf anywhere. Are you going to get into trouble, Amicus? Amica shrugs, leaning one way than the other in a sort of stretch. Oh, probably, but Cato is always upset. They'll probably just make me train an extra hour tomorrow or something. Besides, I've got most of my exercises in at the lake. Amica suddenly does a handstand, his feet poking straight up in the air, and amazed he's able to keep perfectly balanced. Alex quickly looks away as the hanging cloth on the wolf's undergarment falls upward, even if everything is still covered. Well, mostly... I can see the lighter coloured fur that covers his front, also covering his inner thighs. Then Amicus falls backward, keeping his paws on the ground while his feet land with a thump, and wolf's back arched, making a bridge. It's kind of impressive seeing such a thick, muscular body be so limber. That's why I notice Amicus looking directly at me from his upside-down position, watching me watching him. I quickly look away, blushing, realising the wolf is just showing off. Amicus pushes off his paws, smoothly standing up straight. Huh, well, I suppose we could go back to the palace since I need a partner to do the best rest of my training. Unless... Amicus glances at me. Tibor, would you like to assist me? I freeze up for a moment, still feeling a bit awkward a bit about being caught staring at his body. I know I can say no, but Alex is here and I don't want to come off as a belligerent pet in front of him. We're still sort of pretending, after all, even though Alex probably thinks something's off about me. Oh, don't worry, I'm not going to hurt you. It'd probably be the other way around. <laughs> All right. I get up and stand awkwardly in front of the half-naked wolf, glad that I'm at least in my robes now. Oh, do your people have combat sports? Uh, yeah, actually there were a few where your people uplifted. Wrestling and something else where they basically just beat each other up. I can't remember the name of it, though. Amica smiles. Well, that sounds similar enough. This is called Pugnu, and it mostly involves punching, kicking and grappling. The only rules are no claws, no teeth, and no gun for the eyes, or groin. Amicus smirks at me. And while sparring, we avoid striking above the neck. So, go ahead and throw some punches at me. 
Amicus grins and hunches down his paws out. I look over at Alex who watches us, a bit of a disapproving look on his face. Amicus notices. Oh, don't mind Alex. His people are too soft for this sport. Um, excuse me, but we invented the grapples you use. We just grew out of it. Amicus seems to ignore the cat, circling me. Come on, don't hold back. Most I just want to train my reflexes. I try to shake off my timidness and move forward, throwing an awkward punch in Amicus's chest. The wolf easily slaps it away. I hope you can do better than that, Tibor. I blush and put a little more effort into a quick punch at the wolf's side, which he dodges with a jump to the right. I follow him and jab at his stomach, which he blocks with an elbow. Oh, come on, you can hit harder than that. We go on for a while longer until I finally stop, Huffin. Amicus comes up from his crouch. What's wrong? Tired already? I shake my head. Honestly, I just don't like throwing punches at you. Feels kind of wrong. Alex perks up. See, Tibor understands. Amicus rolls his eyes. Oh, we are both soft. There's nothing wrong with a bit of a sanctioned combat. In fact, I'd say it creates a more civilised oomph. I take the opportunity to jab Amicus in the side, making the wolf grunt. Amicus turns on me with widened eyes. Uh, oops. Amicus frowns while Alex laughs. Well, I'll show you an oops. Amicus smirks as he ducks in, grabbing my arms and easy pinning them behind my back. Hey! Amicus growls playfully into my ear. <laughs> now it's your turn to train. <laughs> Try and get out of this. He leans heavily against me, using his weight to his advantage. It's clear I have no chance of getting out of the hold, but I try anyway, struggling and complaining. Amicus! I jump and so does Amicus, the wolf immediately letting me go. The sudden lack of support almost causes me to face plant before Amicus catches me, sets me back on my feet. I turn around and see Cato. Despite the volume and fury in his voice just moments earlier, if he is almost calm. Amicus and I stand there for a moment, breathing heavily, then Amicus bows. Oh, good morning, Cato. I quickly follow suit, bowing low. There's a moment of silence as Cato regards us both. Afternoon, you mean? You're late. My apologies, I lost track of the time at the lake. Your pet did not remind you? Is that not one of his duties? Cato's gaze snaps in my direction, I almost jump. I don't know what to do, so I go back to bowing, wondering if I should apologise. I have not taught him our hours yet, Cato. It's my fault. Cato watches us for a moment longer, then begins unfastening in his robe. Luckily, my appointment with the Praetor has been cancelled, so despite your tardiness, we may train. Cato tosses his robe aside. Move, pet. I stand there like an idiot for a moment, for realising he's talking to me. I hurry over to sit down next to Alex. I can tell by the expression on his face that he's also a bit worried. I see you've already warmed up. Cato glances over at me again before turning back to Amicus, getting into a crouch. Amicus stands awkwardly for a moment before doing the same. Oh uh, yes, did you need to... I did mine while waiting for you over half an hour, Amicus. Uh, the two big wolves start circling each other. I want to ask Alex if this is normal, but something tells me I shouldn't speak out of turn in the presence of Cato. Your brother had a very successful speech in the city today. Over 500,000 attended. Hmm? Amicus seems thrown off by what Cato said, then Cato's fist snaps out and smacks Amicus right on the nose. Ah! The wolf stumbles back, blinking and snorting as he holds his face. I wince. Didn't Amicus just tell me they didn't go for the face during training? Look at Alex questioningly, the cat is now looking firmly at the ground between his feet, his ears down. That's double his last speech, Amicus, and it rivals your father's early days as emperor. Amicus has recovered at this point, he's got his paws back up, his teeth bared. He doesn't respond and starts circling Cato again, this time he attacks first, throwing an elbow at Cato's face. Cato ducks in and moves to the side, smacking the fist into Amicus's back right over the kidney. Ah! Amicus lets out a pain grunt, bending sideways and stumbling before forcing himself back into position, his teeth showing now. While you were being puff at the lake, Cassius was touring the countryside and even that drew thousands. Cato throws a sudden kick at Amicus's thigh and I look away. I still hear the painful thwack of furry flesh from furry flesh. This isn't training, this is punishment. Stealing a ship and flying across the galaxy will only get you so far, Amicus. You win the people over, not me. <coughs> 
Amicus bull rushes the old wolf, grabbing one of Kato's legs by the thigh, lifting him off the ground while he starts throwing vicious punches in the older wolf's face. Kato seems to become dazed, stumbling on his one foot, raising his paws to protect himself. I silently root for Amicus, wanting to see him put the old man on his ass. Then Kato's paw comes around in a vicious slap that turns Amicus's head to the right. He drops Kato's leg, and that's when the old wolf wraps his arms around Amicus's waist, setting his shoulder in the earth of wolf's stomach before actually lifting him up off the ground. I don't know exactly how much Amicus weighs, but it's probably around the same as Kato himself. Somehow the old wolf is able to carry Amicus across the pit in a rush. Alex and, I, Alex and I dive out of the way as Kato crashes Amicus into the stairs with a thudding crunch. <sighs> I look back and see Amicus folded around Kato's shoulder, making it sound like a deflating tire as his eyes bulge. After a moment, Kato finally pulls back. Amicus curls up and rolls down the few steps to the pit of the amphitheatre, making a horrible groaning sound. Kato, meanwhile, straightens out his undergarments for turning to pick his robes up. Robes up. Good spar, Amicus. I hope you learned something from it. I announce to the public that the trials will begin at the end of this month. Remember that your pet will be involved, and so be sure that he's prepared. Cato ties on his robe as he walks away, and suddenly turns as if forgetting something, addressing the still wheezing Amicus. Oh, and your sister and her guest arrived today. She requested to see you in the Great Hall as soon as our session ended. And with that, Cato stalks off, his robes billowing in the wind. I rush to Amicus's side. Amicus, are you okay? I know that wolves are tougher than humans, but if I'd been slammed into the stairs like that, there'd be a good chance I'd never get back up. I set a hand on Amicus's back as he hugs at his middle, presses his face against the stone floor. He keeps making a strained, grunting sound, and I can see a strand of drool connecting from his lips to the ground. Alex stands next to us, ner- nervously fidgeting with his robe. Amicus? Amicus surprises me by roughly pushing my hand away. Hey, I just lost lost my wind. Give me a moment. Amicus turns away from me, then rolls onto his back. His paws above his head and his breathing still irregular. At least he is breathing now. Alex clears his throat. Amicus, do you need medical attention? Amicus takes a deep breath and lets it out slowly. Uh, no, Alex. All right, then I should probably take my leave. I don't know when Cassius will return. Alex, looking extremely uncomfortable, bows to both of us. Amicus, Tibor, thank you for the outing. It was very relaxing. He then quickly makes his exit down the stone path, disappearing through the trees. I stand awkwardly off to the side, waiting for Amicus to recover. <laughs> some, of amb- some ambassador friend he is. He opens one eye, looking at me. You know, you can head back to the palace as well. I just want to make sure you're okay. I'm fine. I mean, he hit you really hard. I'm a little worried. Oh, don't be. Go back to my room. Amicus's usually cheerful mood is completely dissipated. Well, if I'm pretending to be your pet, then I guess I'll just pretend to be worried, all right? Amicus just grunts and finally gets to his feet, wincing as he does. He straightens out his undergarments, which had twisted off the side before walking toward the same path Alex had taken. I quickly catch up, following a few steps behind the wolf. Amicus is hunched over, walking with a light limp. I feel a wave of anger for Kato. He'd be nice to me yesterday, but now I realise that isn't typical for him. I understood the lesson he was teaching Amicus in the amphitheatre. I don't understand why it had to involve violence. Is this how the wolves normally treated each other? Fake civility with bursts of savage aggression? Was that... was what Cato did normal? What do you mean? I mean, does he usually just beat you like that? Amicus sighs deeply. Uh, Not usually, no. Seemed a bit much. Can we not speak of this? I'm not in the mood. I go quiet and I see Amicus, his ears fall flat for a bit before coming back up. We walk the rest of the way to the palace in silence. I'm sure to stay a few steps behind Amicus, wanting to give him space. I get the feeling that while he's definitely upset about what happened, he's mostly just embarrassed that I saw it. We finally reach the main entrance to the palace and just as we turn into the great hall. Amicus! A high sing-song voice echoes around the marble walls as a slight wolvish figure quickly approaches us. A wolf I can only imagine is Virginia walks up to Amicus. She places both paws on his shoulders and leans in, pressing the side of her face to his. Hi, Virginia. Virginia pulls back, rolling her eyes. Amicus, I took your place on the trip round the moon for a full week and your only response is hi. 
Oh, sorry, I, I'm not feeling all that well. Oh, was Cato too rough with you during the training? Shall I have a word with him? Uh, no, I'm just sore. Mm, you could use a shower too. You smell dreadful. Uh, we were swimming in the lake. Never mind. I should be getting back to my room. Enough with the dua mood, Amicus. Not until we introduce our guests to each other. Virginia looks right at me over Amicus's shoulder. Amicus sighs and reaches out his paw to me. I walk over to him, letting the wolf place his paw on my shoulder. This is Tibor. He's an abandoned child. Oh, fascinating. Thought Cass was putting my tail in his letters. Virginia stretches out a paw. I stand there awkwardly and show what to do, so I reach out and take her paw in my hand. Then, after another pause, I lean down and brush my lips on her fur, like I'd seen people do in movies. Interesting. Seems they have some sort of etiquette. I step back, keeping my head down. A bit, yes. Now, where's the Chemian? Man is Amicus. He's examining the murals. She turns to her right, raising her voice a bit. Neferu, could you come over here and meet my brother, please? There's a moment of silence, then soft footsteps. A canine appears around the corner. It's fur much darker than the wolves, almost pitch black. He's covered in gold highlights, and immediately I'm struck by how he looks. Not just because his presence is impressive, well, it definitely is, mostly because he reminds me of something on Earth. Not just something, but an entire thing. A culture. As I stare, I realize he's not looking at Amicus, but at me. I quickly look down again, not wanting to draw attention to myself. Neferu, this is my brother Amicus. Neferu bows his head slightly in Amicus's direction. Hello, thank you for letting me take up residence in your palace. It is indeed beautiful. It's hard to describe. I immediately know that Neferu is seek, speaking a different language than the wolves. It has a different feel in my brain, like a different dialect. Well, certainly. You'll have to excuse my appearance. I was just out combat training. Oh, I see. It must have been a rough session by the looks of it. Neferu gives Amicus a cool smile. Amicus can only manage a grunt in response, self-consciously running a paw over his head for... That's when Neferu turns his cool blue gaze on me. And who might you be? I open my mouth to answer, then catch myself and quickly look back down. Oh, this is Tibor, my pet. Oh, he's an abandoned child. Amicus says it quickly, putting his paw on my shoulder again while gently pulling me in the direction of his room. It was wonderful meeting you, but now I must be off to my shower. Neferu offers his paw to me. I pause again, but Amicus just stares at Neferu, so I take it and do the same as I did with Virginia. Nefru lets out a soft chuckle as I let go of his paw. What a fascinating creature. How do you speak? I make sure to give a long pause, then... Little. I see. Nefru keeps his eyes fixed on me. I have to wonder why the hell he's taking such an interest. <clears throat> Amicus draws me close to his side with a paw, while starting to walk in the direction of the hall. Uh, if you'll excuse this, I need my pet's assistance in the showers. Uh, pleasure meeting you. Virginia, who had been silent throughout, smiles. Don't worry, Neferu. We just caught my brother in a bad mood. Usually he's much more friendly. I can hear you, Virginia. I'm still here. So you are, yet you said you had to be off. We shall speak more in, the depth, in depth in the evening, perhaps when you've stopped sulking. Amicus grunts non-committally and pulls me along towards his bedroom. As we arrive at Amicus's room, there's a card of flatbread vegetables and a bowl of sauce sitting outside the door. I've come to realise there are two main meals in a day, breakfast and dinner with a sort of midday snack in between. Amicus grabs the cart and shoves it into the room toward the sofa, almost rattling the contents to the floor. Then, without a word, he heads straight to the shower, leaving me to sit on the couch while I frown at the door. First, I think about calling him out on his bad mood when he comes back out. Maybe going about how I didn't ask to be here and him being an ass only makes it worse. Then I start to realise that maybe I wouldn't be so happy myself if I got my ass kicked in front of my friends. I spend the next 15 minutes or so spreading the orange-coloured sauce in the flatbed or sprinkling the vegetables on top and rolling it into a wrap. It's good, and the sauce is one of the first spicy things that I've experienced on this moon. Then Amicus comes back out, looking particularly fluffy. I'm about to ask what if he wants to get brushed, but he just falls back into his bed with a groan. You're right. Never better. A few of the chopped peppers followed my wrap onto the sofa, and I quickly pick them back up and set them on the cart. This is actually really good. I was starting to worry that you guys didn't have food with actual flavour here. 
You know, the country where you guys uplifted, Italy, is known for its food. Actually, before you uh, took me, I had this trip planned to go to Naples, which is a few hours outside of Rome, just to try the pizza. Do you have pizza here? Amicus gazes at me with a frown. I wonder if he understood a single thing I said. No. Oh, well, it's still like this if we kept it flat and we baked it. Anyway, you want some? I hold up my wrap with a smile. Amicus glares. Well, I just had my gut squashed flat in that flat right here, assuming I still have an appetite. I quickly lower it. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Amicus goes on staring at the ceiling while I nibble on the food. I'm not really all that hungry anymore. Then Amicus sighs deeply, covering his face with his paws. I'm sorry. I've just been thinking a lot is all. About? Amicus just shakes his head, continue to rub his brow. Well, how sore I am for one. I look over at the wolf, then remember what he said last night about the massage. I think about it for a moment. Amicus has been trying to make me as comfortable as possible throughout the few days I've been here, minus the sofa. I kind of feel like I owe it to him. You want a massage? I see Amicus freeze up, his face still covered with his paws until he finally lowers them, his expression almost comical. What? I feel myself turning red. I asked if you want a massage. Well, I thought you didn't want to. Well, I never really gave you an answer, did I? Amicus narrows his eyes. Well, I don't want to force you into something you don't want to do. Well, I'm offering, but if you don't want it... I start to sit back down. Amicus's ears fall flat. Oh, no, no, please do. I try to hide my smile as I get back up and approach the bed. Amicus just sort of watches me, half sitting up. Once I get to the edge of the bed, I pause. Um, so what do I do? Oh, uh... Amicus rolls over onto his front. Well, honestly, I don't really know how it's supposed to be done, but you could start with some, uh, light rubbing. Cautiously, I get up onto the bed on my knees, try not to get tangled up in my robe as I scoot closer. Tentatively, I reach out and touch the wolf's back. Amicus inhales gently, his back rising against my fingers. Then, slowly, I start to massage, starting on his thick neck before slowly rubbing my way down. I don't know the first thing about massaging, so I just do what feels natural, and Amicus seems to like it. When I reach his mid-back, he grunts. A little more gentle there. I got scraped on the stairs. I pause, then tease through the fur a bit and find a small, fresh scab right on Amicus's spine. I pet the fur back down before moving past it, working my thumbs into the muscles on either side of the wolf's spine. Cato's an asshole. Amicus lets out a choke cough of surprise. Tibor, oh, don't say that. He's the acting emperor. Well, he is. If you must say it, at least keep your voice down. I swear, Cassius sometimes has his ear pressed to my do- oh. Amicus moans as I start on his neck again and press harder than I had last time, really sinking into the muscle. The wolf's body melts into the bed and I grin with satisfaction as I keep up the pressure down the rest of his back. It would be easier if I were straddling him, but I don't know how to feel about doing that just yet. Amicus is quiet for a few minutes while I work, then he sighs. He was right, though. I still act like a pup. I need to be more serious. I frown. What do you mean? Well, Cato had every right to beat me. I haven't been acting very much like an emperor lately. I shake my head. First of all, no one should be beaten. Second, Cassius acts like a child, or pup. I mean, you might sometimes act a little immature, but he's a brat. You're fine if he's the one you're competing with. Besides, you're a lot of fun to be around. If I were a wolf, I would think it's pretty cool to have an emperor as nice and fun as you are. Oh, really? Well, I suppose things are different here. I forgot myself at the lake today, and when Cato caught me teasing you... Amicus presses his face into the pillow, cringing. Can you not have fun as a prospective emperor? Oh, not really. Cassius hasn't been out in the lake in a few years. Sometimes I think something's wrong with me, and I still enjoy such things. I think trying to decide whether my opinion is worth anything on this alien moon. Well, I don't think so. People our age on Earth do way dumber stuff to have fun, and it's considered normal. Even when you get older, you're expected to do things you enjoy. Otherwise, what's the point of life? We're only here for a moment before we die, and that's it. I can't help but feel my argument is a bit amateurish. Amicus doesn't seem convinced either. Well, first of all, the point of my life is to lead my people to a better future. Secondly, we become one with the parents when we die. I frown. Become one? What? Did they 
absorb your soul or something. I stifle my chuckle when I see that Amicus is still very serious. No, well, I don't know, but our consciousness joins theirs, and we go on to spread throughout the universe together. Huh. Is there proof of this? Did they say that's what happens? Well, of course. I think of questioning further, but right now I'm not really in the mood to debate anything religious with this wolf. His mind seems beyond the having fun issue anyway. Well, I will say the Roman emperors on Earth had a lot of fun. I laugh. There was an emperor named Alagabalus that didn't really give a shit about what the people thought of him. He had all the fun and sex he wanted. Oh? Amicus sounds amused. Then I wince, remembering that no one really liked Alagabalus, and he was killed along with his male lover. Then his beheaded body was dragged through the streets of Rome. Well, I think balance is a good thing to have in life. Be serious when you need to be. Have fun when you can. Amicus just grunts again. I go on rubbing for a while longer. Oh, so while I was at my studies, I had some time in the library to myself. I found this primate species in the general vicinity of your star. They were part of a failed uplift and looked generally similar to you. A lot hairier, but I don't think anyone will notice. The name they have for themselves is pronounceable by us, but we named the Simanians. So if anyone asks you what you are, tell them that. Oh, okay. I repeat the word in my head, trying to memorise it. Also, uh, I would recommend avoiding that Chemian. I didn't like the looks of him. Why not? Well, I don't know, but his demeanour was rather rude. I feared they are an arrogant people, but to see it in person. I almost laugh at the hypocrisy of that statement. I'd pointed out if Amicus wasn't being so grumpy right now. And the way he looked at you didn't sit well with me. Just be sure you watch out for him. I didn't really see much of a difference between Neferu and the wolves aside from an appearance, but Amicus seems genuinely concerned. All right. Amicus grunts in response and go on rubbing for a little while longer. Then Amicus rolls over. I pause. Um, Amicus suddenly opens his eyes as if realising what he's doing. Oh, uh, do I uh, do your front too? Well, often after I get my massage, my drone rubs me. Helps me fall asleep for my afternoon naps. I rub you where? Amicus's ears turn bright red. Uh, my, uh, my belly. I laugh. Don't laugh, you're the one who wanted to know. I hesitate, and almost automatically my hand reaches out and starts to rub. Amicus is tense at first, then starts to relax, the blush in his ears receding. You're such a canine. Well, I am a canine. The fur, fluffy and dishevelled from the shower, smooths down against the wolf's thick stomach, his belly rising and falling against my hand. In his relaxed state, his stomach is soft under the fur and I press down a bit more firmly to really rub at it. Amicus grunts and winces a bit. Too hard? Oh, just sore, but keep going. It feels good. As I continue to rub, his eyes close and his muzzle parts slightly. So, the trial starts soon, at the end of this month, I guess? Oh, yes. And I'm involved in it somehow? Mm-hmm. Want to talk about it later? Mm. Now that I'm thinking about it, I'm getting a bit nervous. But Amicus doesn't seem to be worried, and that puts me at ease, at least a little bit. That's when I noticed a particular bulge in Amicus's undergarments, the one I noticed when I brushed him yesterday. I'm not surprised this time, though. Brushing had done it to him, rubbing definitely would too. So I ignore it, and so does Amicus. Or maybe he's just asleep. I realise then just how much I've accepted my life here, rubbing this prospective Emperor Wolf's belly, even though I know it's making him hard. I also realised I don't really mind it. It's only been a few days, but there's something about this wolf. I don't know. I just like him. Amicus starts to snore, so I slowly stop rubbing, watching his chest rise and fall with his steady breaths. Think about going back over the sofa, but instead I just roll over to Amicus's left, curling upon my side in the soft pillows. With the relaxing sounds of Amicus's gentle snores behind me, I drift off into a light sleep. <laughs>